Hi, I'm John Storms, and today I'm playing with David Pitt's Pie Cap. And what this does is this basically sits on top of a Raspberry Pi, which we all know we can run FPP off of and use it to control our show. But we can stick this guy on top using the GPGPIO pins, and this will actually be a pixel controller for two strings of pixels connecting right here. And we can also use it for a uh, single serial output. Now this is for doing like RS-45, DMX, Lidarama. This is not Ethernet. Okay. But um, yeah, it just sits right on top of there. And uh, just looking over the board quick, like we showed, it has two connectors. Two of these Phoenix connectors for connecting to strings. This one's P1, this was P2. And on the board you can see that it goes, it's three pins, ground, data, volts. So if you're looking at like SAN devices and the, uh, the bigger Falcon boards, you'll notice those are four pin connectors where they also have a pin for clock. Um, these don't have that obviously for size. Here, this is a connector. This is where you would connect the power supply that's going to power um, the, uh, the lights. You can also optionally have it power the board. Okay. Um, this is a terminator. So this is a RS-45 and according to that protocol you're supposed to have the uh, RS-45 chain terminated and this does that automatically with this jumper. Also you have the options, D um, different DMX uses certain pins to transmit and receive and then Lightrama decided to use different pins for their uh, transmission and receiving. So normally you need a cable to cross over but instead here you just move the, all these three jumpers down by one and then apparently there's a separate one for Renard which uh, I've never used. Uh, here there's a two amp um, fuse. Here's two, I believe these are one amp fuses. And of course these are the GP GPIO pins. There's a place for a battery which the board comes with. These are CR121 one two two five batteries and these typically will drain um, while the board's not in use um, I know I have a pie clock that I used to put onto my uh, onto my um, raspberry pie and so I keep it disconnected in the off season but you put that in plus side up right there okay I'm not sure what these two guys these three guys are socketed chips for something and then these jumpers here are what can, these three jumpers control the um, the power. And David's so nice, you flip the board over and the instructions are right there. So this first one, you can see it says power P1 right there. And when that's jumpered, that says pull your power from the Raspberry Pi. This guy underneath. Okay. And then these other two allow you to specify the power supply that's coming in through this interface here. Okay, so if you're using between 7 volts and 24 volts, you would jumper both of these. These are there are four pins underneath these two jumpers, and you would jumper all four of those if you are doing um, between 7 volts and 24 volts. Now, if you're doing 5 volts. You see, here's the cheat sheet here. If you're doing 5 volts, then you would just cover pins 2 and 3, which means you would remove these two jumpers and then jumper the two pins in between. Okay? And that's super easy. Now, really, the hardest part about this whole thing you'll find is uh, just screwing the, just putting the standoffs in because the little screws are so small. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the this board on top, so I'm going to line up the GPGPIO pins, general purpose IO. See, I just line it up like that, gently push it down until it's all the way in place. And now I go and get the, the little risers. Really appreciate people sending all the stuff for the assembly, that's nice. David Pitts includes everything you need here. Now watch these big fingers try to maneuver these little pieces, parts into place. Okay, 
run the first one through. It has a little nut. Like I said, this is the hardest part. You get past this and you're home set. You're home free. You do want these because this keeps the uh, keeps the board separated. And then I saw on Facebook somebody came up with a 3D printer that will uh, print you out a really nice case for you. Oh no, I dropped the little nut. It's a 3D printer that will, a uh, little 3D printer design that will print out a really nice looking case. Because I had my Raspberry Pi in this nifty little case that was just just fit it just right and of course it's gone now that's not going to fit with this guy sitting on top of it and you know what? I'm going to cheat I'm going to only put three of these risers on because the fourth one is really redundant See, I told you this is this is the hardest part of the whole thing right here. There we go. We got it. Okay. So those are in place. So now what I want to do is I want to hook my Raspberry Pi back up. So this is the flash drive. I picked the biggest one I could find for some reason. And I put that in there. That has my files. And then I hook up the Ethernet to the Pi. This one on the Pi. This is not Ethernet. Okay? That's important. Okay, so now I need power. So I got my power supply here. Okay, focusing in a little more. So I got them in there, got them tightened down. Now have my guy here and we are just gonna slide him in you want to make sure the little tongue there clicks over top All right, so we're good so the next thing I want to do is I want to get some pixels hooked up okay to these two ports man that's a lot of wire showing I do not like that all right, so I got the power. I took the second to get the connection the way I wanted it, but uh, I got the power connected now, and I'm using a 12 volt power supply. Why? Because I have 12 volt pixels. So what I'm going to do is I need to stick this connector on the end. Where'd it go? I just had the end. Here it is. It's not really the end. It's the start. Okay, you always got to have the start of the string, and you know you're looking at the start if you can see this information. So you're looking through the epoxy, and I can see this first line is 12 volt, this says data, this says ground. So what I've done is I've stripped the leads, and um, you know, putting the connector the way it's going to fit, then you can see, okay, this is ground, middle is data, outside is volt. So what I did is I pulled it off, and on the connector I marked what was voltage, what was ground, of course, data is in the middle. So now, I come into here, I confirm 12 volt goes with this side. Give all these guys a little bit of a twist. Okay, so 12 volt goes in there, data in the middle, and ground on the end. 
Oh no, my battery's dying on my phone, my camera. Quick. Okay, I tighten up all three connectors on the Phoenix connector. Get them nice and snug. See that? Just like that. So voltage goes to 12. Data is in the middle, ground is on the end. And then I just stick it in. Just like that. And so this is P2, so this is actually on the second one. And this one has 25 pixels. The other string, I already have the connector on, right there. This one I'm going to stick into P1. Okay, oh no, this one came loose. See that? My ground one came out, so I need to redo that one. This happens all the time. I think most of the time when I have problems with my pixels not working, it's because one of these connections became loose. There we go. Okay, so I have 25 pixels on P2, and I have 48 pixels on P1. These are just my some of the strings that I and I pull one or two off at a time, or I cut in half for for another thing. Um, okay, so the other thing I need to do is I'm going to hook up this. This is my uh, wireless connection. See, I got a little wire, you know. 802.11 wireless adapter there, but I just put it on a powered hub. I do the powered hub, that way I know the um, wireless is getting enough enough power to do its thing. And here I'm just plugging that into the USB, USB connection. Alright, and then the last thing is the power connector for the Pi itself is on this side and you know what just for grins I'm gonna get the uh, HDMI connector and plug it onto the TV so I can let, watch it boot up okay so here we are, we're all set up. Now I don't have anything attached to um, the RS-485 output, okay? But I have two strands of lights. I have the power supply hooked up. and just double check to make sure I don't have any shorts. I have the ethernet hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. This is the wireless uh, ethernet. You don't really need it for this demo, but I have it set up. And then this is my storage. And then I make sure that the other little card is popped in. I always pop them out. And now we hit the power button. Let me plug in the power supply. Okay, so this is the Pi. This is the big power supply. And then this is for the wireless. Okay, I've got a green light on the power supply. Of course the Raspberry Pi is going rainbows. You can see lights all a flashing on this guy. That's the Raspberry Pi booting up. Linux got raspberries up in the corner. And then once this is powered up, well, I'll switch over to the computer and we'll get this configured. My Raspberry Pi, I already have it set up on a um, Ethernet address of 10.0.0.213. It's 
booting, booting, booting. Web server's coming up. FPP is booting up. And I am running 1.8, which is the most up-to-date version. Okay, and I just synced up the time. So I am ready to go. Yep, there's my login. Okay, so switch over to the computer and get this configured. All right, so now we're on the computer. Uh, and one thing I don't have set up is I am not connected into the hub like I'm supposed to. So let me go set up my Ethernet because I have my Raspberry Pi and my controllers on a 10.0.0.0 network. So I'm going to go over here to change adapter settings, go to Ethernet, properties, scroll down to IP4, and I'm going to use a static address. I'm going to use 10.0.0.200. Netmask doesn't, it's, two five, it's an 8-bit netmask, and I don't need to set a gateway, don't need any DNS. That's that. Okay, so now I got my Ethernet all set up. I am going to go open up a web browser and go to my Pi, my Raspberry Pi, which is at 10.0.0.213. This is a static IP that I gave uh, some time ago. And what I want to do is I want to set up those two strings. So I go to Input Output Setup tab and select Channel Outputs. And then under channel outputs, I select other, and then I select add, and I am going my, let's see, I'm going to use RPIWS2811 because I have 2811 pixels, and then here I could just tell it how many pixels I have. So on the string one, that was 25 pixels. Okay. And then string 2 was 48 pixels, which gives me 219 channels. Okay, so I'm going to okay, save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reboot the whole, um, I'm going to reboot the whole thing. So I've saved the configuration, now I'm going to reboot. Yes, reboot. All right, FPPD is running. I go to channel outputs, go to other, and I have my 219 channels configured. Seems to be doing better now. So now I go to status control. I go to display testing. I say I want to start at channel one and go to channel 219 because 73 pixels times three is 219. And I click enable test mode and the lights are going. See, right there. So it works very, very nicely. Now I can change to be, instead of just red, green, blue chase, I can say do red, green, blue, all. All, of course, is white. I can do red, green, blue, all, none, which then turns it off. Or I could do red, green, blue, all, none. So it does that. When they have this chase built in, So, pretty nice. Ooh, chase size 2? What if I did chase size 6? Oh, pretty cool. So anyway, um, it works very nicely. So this is a really good alternative if you want to have, you know, your a wholly self-contained element. So this can run the show, run the scheduler, I mean everything you need is, is right there. So I mean that's a whole self-contained pixel display. Very cool stuff from the guys at uh, Falcon Christmas.